the one referred to as the Tyrant King. Certainly a most fearsome creature. All the more reason why so many seek and wish to play as it, to feel its power. Be that as it may, the T-Rex is not the only powerhouse on Gondola. There's something who has been referred to as the biggest of them all. For now, it doesn't matter what it's been referred to as. The Giganotosaurus are certainly a powerhouse. So let's find out, what should you do to properly wield this power? Remember, true strength is how you wield it. Hello there, my name is Adam Rockter and today I'm going to teach you how to fight properly as a Giganotosaurus. Of course, first of all, the disclaimers. And yet all major updates to the Giganotosaurus may change how you play it, so what I'm about to teach you may be just temporarily. Also, my time with the Giganotosaurus are pretty limited, so one of you more experienced Giganotosaurus players might not agree with everything I say, and if you find something disagreeable, just comment it down below in a mature way. In this video, we will first be going over what type of subspecies you should grow, what the Giganotosaurus arsenal looks like, what choice of terrain you should choose to fight in, and what type of fights you can find yourself in. And at the end, I'll uh, come with the summarize. As Giganotosaurus is a modern creature, it does come with more variation than just your traditional balance, speed and defense subspecies, and of course attack in some cases. While I do feel like I lack the proper experience to come up with a proper conclusion, majority of players I meet do choose the bad. <clears throat> the defense or stocky version of the Giganotosaurus, and you can't really go wrong from choosing that subspecies. Of course, it might make head-to-head uh, -head clashing with other apexes easier, but it can also go against you against... As I was about to say, it might go against you when you're fighting mid-tiers where defense might be the better for you rather than speed. But of course, if you do find that lacking, then you can just change subspecies later. For abilities, the first slot are pretty much something I can only guess are sense abilities. The first ability is standard stats with no positive or negative effects. The second ability is just speed increase at the cost of some defense. The third ability is defense increase at the cost of some speed. And the fourth is attack ability that increases attack at the cost of some defense. The head abilities have two slots, so that means we can equip two abilities. We have three abilities. We have the normal bite attack that causes medium damage, nothing too much about it. Then we have ripping bite that causes bleed whenever it's used. And then we have charge bleed bite that causes a bleed duration depending on how long it's held. The height abilities has four alternative and this is really subjective. We have the standard height with neither positive nor negative effects. We have Marathon Runner that increases stamina by 20% at the cost of turning radius. Then we have Resilient that increases bleed and venom resistance by 50%. Then we have Endurance which increases trotting speed at the cost of some sprint speed. For leg abilities we have simple back kicks that causes medium damage on left and right. For back win, we have a charge ability that I don't even bother using but just have it equipped just because why not? For tail abilities, we have two options. We have the standard tail attack and the balanced tail. I'll say this now, but in my opinion, it kind of depends on what you're fighting on what tail you should be using. I'll come back to that later. For call abilities, we have the usurper calls, which increases your bleed damage for yourself and anyone in your group. As you can see, there's a lot of abilities here that focuses a lot on bleed. And that is what I meant with, it kinda depends on what you're fighting, because what you're fighting will determine how you fight. The thing about Giganotosaurus, there's actually two main styles you can play as. You can either choose to be a bleeder, hitting your enemies with bleeding attacks and slowly but surely let them bleed out. To do this, you will then of course have to focus your Giganotosaurus to do hits and run, which will mean investigating speed rather than power. 
the other one is just straight up head to head clash which I by the way don't recommend. Of course in this case you investigate a lot in power and defense. Actually, if you're going to play solo, it's better for you if you combine those two playstyles. And while I do lack the proper experience to conclude this matter, this is at least what I choose as my abilities. You more experienced Giga players out there, please leave any tips down below because I'm actually perplexed to what is actually the superior of options. While the arsenal may be up for debate, the terrain is not. The Giga can fight decently pretty much everywhere, with the exception of deep forests uh, or places with a lot of vegetation and hindrances, but either than that you should be good. And while some creatures like Megalania can go under your tail attack or bite attack, your back kicks are probably enough to keep them off your tail. That being said, if you're fighting one on one against something else like another Apex, try to keep the battle onto open terrain. If you're fighting multiple opponents, then try to still keep it in an open terrain but in an area with more hindrances to obscure their teamwork and also get them stuck and then easier for you to kill. Also, it goes without saying, but I wouldn't really bother fighting semi-aquatics near a body of water. Even if you are a pretty decent damage effort, unless they are sleeping, you're not gonna one-shot or three-shot them. Gigas are pretty terrible in water, and once they are fled into the water, then there's not much you can do. Your charge ability and call does use stamina, so it's best to activate them at the beginning of the fight. After that, it is best you get a fully charged bleed attack in. That way, you can make sure that your enemy loses health even if the battle may take a while. In the case of Spinosaurus, you can't really get him to use up his stamina through his abilities. He doesn't have any stamina drain on his abilities. And also, taking a fully charged attack hurts. So when it does charge up the bite, it is best for you to move out of the way. This is also something you gotta do against T-Rex's charge up attack. Or any charge up attack for that matter. You have to make sure that your opponent moves a lot to make sure that he bleeds. And after he has bleeded a lot, that's when you can be more aggressive. Also, in the case of Spinosaurus, if he turns the battle into a battle of turn radius, that's when you have to move out, create some distance and make sure that he can tail around you. The Spino has a better turn radius than you, so it's useless to try to compete with him in that area. Remember, a Giga can win a head-to-head -head clash, but only if you have more HP than him. That's why it's best to open up with a fully charged bleed attack, let him bleed out to lose HP, and then go after his ass. It's not that the Giga can't do a head-to-head -head clash. The damage I put it does clearly makes it capable of doing so. But once again, unfortunately, it is the Giga's HP that keeps it from doing so. Of course, if your opponent has pleaded a lot and you feel good about it, then that's when you can at least try it. If there's 1v1 against the mid there, then there's the question if they're even going to fight you. As they are smaller than you, they of course are faster than you. With their high mobility and speed, it's really up to them if they want to fight you or not. Which, by the way, if they are alone, very little chance that they actually will. And if they do run away, then it's not really worth it to chase them. Of course, if they do choose to fight, then you will have a clear advantage in both size and power. Of course, they are faster than you, so it's better for you to fight them in an area with a lot of hindrances to limit their movement. Against smaller and faster creature, it is best to use the faster bleed attack. But using the charge ability against faster creature is kind of a waste because it's not really that conspicuous, so people can just dodge it if you try it.
just a little mistake from my end. If you're not gonna use any of your bleed attacks, then it's not really worth it to use your call. At least according to what it says, it only increases the bleed damage and not really the raw damage. Take a defensive stand and conserve as much stamina as you can. Once you see an opening, be it that they run out of stamina or are obstructed by hindrances, that's when you can rush in and end it. If you're fighting multiple enemies, if the case is where you can't kill them in just a few shots, then it is a pretty much impossible battle. What you can do is pretty much just try and take a defensive stand and hope that you can probably kill them before they can kill you. Unfortunately, against a greater number, even the strongest can fall. So to summarize, against Apexes, use the charge up ability after you use the call and get a fully charged bleed attack in. Don't immediately rush in to do damage, let the bleed do its job, and after a while, that's when you can be aggressive. Against mid-tiers, try to fight them in an area where the terrain will limit their movement. Take a defensive stand and let them waste their stamina by running circles around you. And once they're low and unable to run away, that's when you can do the counter-attacking. Against many opponents, Start hugging the wall and hope you can probably kill one of them before they can kill you, or just go down like a champ. Before I end this video, I just thought of, it's kind of weird. It's mostly just Spinosaurus versus Tyrannosaurus Rex. Why isn't there as much Giganotosaurus versus Tyrannosaurus Rex? Jurassic World Dominion was all about that, and even then it's not as much spoken about. It's just, what does Spino have that Giga doesn't?